It's estimated that a typical pair of human eyes can see hundreds of different colors. But 23 million years ago, our primate ancestors were red-green colorblind. So how did we come to have the rich color vision we have today? I'm in Seattle to meet one of the world's experts on color vision, Jay Knights. Oh, hey, Neil hey. Schumann. Huh? Great to meet you. Good to see you. Well, great to be in the, uh, the color lab. Jay's been studying how animals see color for the last 25 years. This is the place, huh? Yep. This is where we test color vision in the monkeys. Experiments conducted here show that most mammals, including many primates, are red-green colorblind. This is Kramer. Hi, Kramer. And Kramer is colorblind. Kramer is shown a red blob on a green background. If he kisses the red, he gets a treat. If you can't see red or green, this is completely invisible. Most humans can clearly see this red blob. But Kramer can't. He can't tell the difference between reds and greens. So why can't Kramer see the red blob? OK, Kramer, you are a star. <laughs> Kramer's eyes, like all eyes, rely on special proteins called opsins to detect color. They're held in thousands of special cells in the retina at the back of the eye. Kramer's got two types of opsin, each tuned to specific wavelengths of light. Signals from these opsins are then interpreted by the brain, which allows Kramer to perceive color. But to see color like we do, Kramer would need a third opsin, tuned to different wavelengths of light. We think our early primate ancestors were like Kramer. They had just two opsins as well. So how did they evolve a third opsin? The answer is in our DNA. Each opsin is encoded by a single gene. And when scientists compared these genes, they found that the gene for the newer opsin sits right next to one of the old ones. And significantly, they are incredibly similar. Both facts are telltale clues as to how the extra gene evolved. The old opsin gene was duplicated and over many generations, one of these copies acquired small mutations that allowed it to detect different wavelengths of light. Could this change alone have really driven our ancestors' color vision? To find out, Jay set up another experiment. He implanted a third opsin gene from a human directly into the eyes of a colorblind squirrel monkey named Sam. What we did is really a test to see what's the minimal thing you could do in order to give an animal color vision. The results were astounding. Sam used to fail this test. Now he can easily tell the difference between reds and greens. Jay has recreated evolutionary history and given Sam human-like color vision. You might think, oh, it would take them a long time to learn this new pattern in their brain. But as soon as the gene was turned on, the animal began to make these discriminations that they couldn't make before. And so in one you know, very short evolutionary step, it goes to this totally different world. You go from just having strictly, let's say, five colors, gray, black, white, blue, and yellow, to hundreds of different colors that are all the blues and greens and purples and oranges. One simple shift opens a whole universe of... Yeah, that's the amazing thing. It's a multiplicative effect. The ability to see a broad range of colors made it easier for our ancestors to find ripe fruits and young leaves. They passed their color vision to their descendants and eventually to us. We owe our rich color vision to monkeys living in an ancient forest.